Hey everyone, this is Day Trader Rockstar, and this is a market radar for Friday, August 1st, the last day of the week. And boy, what a Thursday it was. Thursday, we had a uh, 300 plus downside move on the Dow. Um, big move down. You can see it here on the daily chart, the big candlestick. And you know, for me being on the radio and, and, and kind of broadcasting and covering the market each and every day, I'm very. Um, you know, very technical in nature. I love uh, charting out the markets. I've been in the markets a long time, so when I see charts play out over and over again, I kind of want those charts to play out. And that was the situation going to this week. Last week, we put out the call that this was a very toppy pattern and I was expecting a rollover. I expected this pattern to break down. Truth is, the market's been so strong that, you know, it came down to a point where, you know, where th this market has constantly showed uh, areas that it had a chance to pull back and we pulled back slightly, but we never really broke a, a major level and it was always just part of a pullback in a bigger pattern. This pattern that played out to over the last couple of days or last couple months actually, um, this rising wedge pattern, the rising wedge pattern uh, moved up here and typically this is a very, very bearish uh, pattern. And everything played out perfect to it all the way down. We could break it down to the 60 minute time frame. But even before that, we had a coil stochastic set up and we called this big down day here. Uh, it was really, you know, the news helped out the whole situation. That came to another minor trend line and we bounced off of that. And the market just continued to seem like it was strong. It was like it was attempting to prove this pattern wrong. And um, but I wouldn't give up. We got overbought again. And I still thought that this pattern was, you know, normally you don't just completely break down. It's, it's usually a fake out breakout type of thing. In this case we got a, a final bounce and we pushed up and then we failed and um, there was some news that came out also so I mean there will be people that kind of um, you know put credit towards the uh, Argentinian, uh, Argentinian uh, default or maybe to some of the issues coming out of Portugal, Ukraine, Russia. You take your pick in this uh, day and age. There's enough stuff out there that nor in the normal markets a few years ago, it would send us spiraling down. So this is the first time that this, these, these things have kind of caught up in the market here. It took a really nice uh, dump today. and But you know what? Seeing it coming, we were ready for it. We picked up the VIX the uh, last few days. We've been trading the VIX and doing well on it. Um, we had some ETFs or had some um, SPXU ETFs. And, uh, and we pretty much cleaned out a lot of the longs, you know, got out of a lot of longs, still holding a few, uh, but basically prepared ourselves because I did I feel like this was going to break down and we broke down. We took profits on the VIX today. Um, still have some gold, still have some uh, uh, bear, bear ETFs. Um, and I expect this to follow through. So that's really the, the, the main portion of this video is today. It's just to talk about tomorrow. I'm here doing some research. I want to get a bigger video out, but you know what? I went over, I, I got 527 stocks I went over today, and I broke down, and I have about 50 in front of me that are potential candidates that are going to end up uh, on the HPS watch list. Now, not all of them are going to end up there. I want to weed these out, but these 50 stocks I really want to go over tomorrow, and uh, you know, you'll see a lot of these on tomorrow's video. Tomorrow, I'm going to do that video. We put out the new watch list for next week, but I want to try to work my darndest um, to get it out early during the day because there's going to be some great setups. I'm going to go through a couple of them, a couple of those uh, setups tonight because I think it's important to get ready for them. All right. So we're going to go over a few of these setups. Um, you know, the pattern here broke down. We'll just get back on the ES or the S&P for a second. You can see the daily stochastics rotating back down. We are still very negative on this. Normally we get under that 20 mark and we start to get oversold. Once you get you know, underneath 40, but ab above 20, and you're, you're, you know, you're really starting to move down, and the stochastic KD line is spread out. You see a nice base, but that's very bearish. The trend is intact, and usually momentum here is, is, is picking up. And what happens is, you know, the momentum is the hardest part. You could get an early bounce tomorrow, but that bounce will be met by sellers, and then we'll rotate back down and, and probably take out uh, today's lows and move down a little bit lower. Um, that's what everything is telling me. I would like to get this back into oversold levels on the uh, daily. The oversold daily stochastics have played out. 
for the last two years, really. I mean, there was a couple points where he had extended, uh, you know, a little faster bounces. But every time you really got down to an oversold level, you had a significant bounce a couple of days. That's what we look for. We look to scalp this market in a short term. <coughs> I won't even say scalp, but, you know, short term swings capture uh, the biggest moves in the shortest amount of time. And these usually happen when the trend changes. You're able to get on board, have a low risk entry, and just ride this baby back up. So now we're just waiting for that uh, special time. So going into Friday, we're going to get that research out for you. I want to talk about a couple of those stocks right now. And uh, again, looking for further downside. And, you know, I'm kind of happy this is happening. Really kind of happy that this is happening. It's giving us a breather. The charts work great. If you enjoy charts, you like the way, uh, you know, to kind of, you know, map out things. Like I'm a big, I was always big into maps growing up. I used to write my own rap maps. I used to draw my own maps. I just loved everything about maps. And, you know, charts for me are the map, map of the markets. And uh, being able to see levels and, and lines and stuff, uh, it really just comes in clear. And I love acting off of those. So we're going to wait for that really next clear setup and take advantage of that and continue to do what we've been doing. And it's been, uh, we've been unstoppable. So I'm, um, you know, there was a couple stocks that got ripped, you know, ripped, ripped down today, uh, but most stocks got hit today, you know, and I think it's just part of the uh, the process. You, you're never going to be able to get uh, out of the market uh, unscathed. I mean, especially doing this day by day, you know, unless you go flat each and every day and you're just, uh, you know, that's the type of trader you are. But we did a great job of scaling out most of the longs and taking those hedges to kind of protect for some, some downside, then profiting from those hedges. And now we're in a position that, you know, maybe uh, start to profit on some of the uh, bearish ETFs and p potentially get some new stocks. So let's take a look at some of the new stocks. First of all, we're in stables. And stables, what a, what a monster move today. I mean, beautiful move. Almost feels like something's happening. Like to get some follow through tomorrow. Uh, Staples is like, you know, I keep on talking about this one, maybe the possibility of being bought out. I don't know, you know. Anyway, Westport Innovation. I got to do more research on it, um, but it's starting to look interesting. There's my warning. Starting to look interesting to me, so just something that's on the radar. And I want to go down. Um, I tell you, this is what we're going to be looking for. There's a couple of Verizons. I've traded Verizon many times. And this is a nice pullback, and there's an underlying trend line. So we're looking at Verizon here in that 49, 49 to 49.50 area. And these are the stocks that we're going to be focused on. Kraft getting a beat down, you know, getting beaten with the ugly, ugly stick um, today. And again, those stocks like Kraft, General Mills, GIS. Look at General Mills. I mean, these are the patterns that we wait for. You know, but they, they um, with the market selling off and aggressively selling off, there's any more bad news. I haven't checked the futures tonight, believe it or not. Um, I could do that, but uh, if if there was continued bad news, well, these a lot of these patterns can break down and, and flush out. So that's why it's a little more difficult um, making that call. And there goes everything on. I apologize for that. I keep on knocking that off because it seems like it's a uh, the X, but bummer. Party foul on my part. All right, General Mills. There we go. I am pretty close to getting back there. Uh, General Mills, Kellogg. Did we talk about Kellogg? I mean, they've all even Kellogg with a retracement here. Beautiful retracement. Big smackdown on Kellogg. You got to start liking these stocks uh, just for a reactionary bounce. So tomorrow is going to be important. I think that's why we're getting this video out because these stocks, even if I don't get to talk about them tomorrow, will be in focus. So General Mills, um, Kellogg, Kraft, KRFT, all really got beat up. Any more follow through, you got to start looking at uh, scaling in on these. They're already oversold multiple times. We might not even get that. I mean, depending on what the market's going to do, what uh, comes out on uh, news tomorrow morning, we might get a gap up. That might have been buying, you know, if you bought the fear, you might have been the, doing the best thing, as you normally is the right thing when you buy the fear. Um, but these are some of the stocks we're going to be looking at tomorrow. I'm going to be focused on going into next week. Uh, there's a lot of other ones, great ones. The Boeing actually started the position uh, scale in today on Boeing. There's other ones out there. We're going to weed through them. 
Chirps are starting to look like a nice flag. Credit Swiss coming down to the lower part of the channel line. I like that. Occidental is right now on a 60-minute time frame on a nice, nice, nice pullback here. So we're we're set up on a lot of these stocks to bounce. But here we have we have a, a situation where I'm thinking that we're going to have some more downside. So the possibility of these trend lines that are all setting up on all these different stocks. You're seeing beautiful ones go by here. Also looking at trading the uh, TNA again. Uh, I like tr scalping that today. It was some good moves in the TNA. We did well on it. I would expect to start uh, doing that tomorrow again. And kind of taking this market uh, on, a, on a quicker time frame. That's the TNA. That's the three cap bull, uh, three time bullish ETF, small cap. And, um, you know, we had a good, I think it was off here. We had a good trade on um, on it today. It was probably right here. It was a nice little pop. Um, and that was a, a what we call a multiple indicator. It was a tra Algo X. It was a tradeometer setup, so we had a nice bounce. Uh, probably the only good bounce of the day. And again, lots of other stocks out there. But the main port, uh, part of this video is just kind of a cautious note going into tomorrow. Um, you know, it's definitely feeling like there's some more downside coming. And as you can see, I'm scrolling through some. some uh, they're looking really, really good. Even the S&P here pulling back. We talked about that. Um, hmm. Ball is actually looking interesting. CMI is getting very close. Coming engines. Look at this big trend line underneath us. So you know we're getting really close to some great companies that are coming, hitting, sitting some great, great levels. Um, the possibility here of a lane divergence on the Russell. That's a major thing. Look how we flatlined here. We didn't really turn over and, and drop down uh, underneath that 20 line again, but we definitely dropped off here. So that's telling me something. So we have a lower low. This is actually quite bullish. And we'll watch this one. This is another example of that lane divergence right here where we we made a low here, popped, made a new low, right? But the stochastic started crossing back up. So we knew that momentum has already shifted. After momentum shifts, price moves. And you can see that was a perfect, perfect uh, bottom on this. So possibly happening again, not uh, really confirmed yet. We have to see a really, uh, you know, a nice cross back up here and for me to believe that. But if that happens, you know, that's telling us something. I don't know if that's going to happen in the SPX. The SPX is, is not set up like that. You know, it's just a big drop off here, the S&P drop off. But let's not forget that we kind of measured this drop off out yesterday and talked about this trend line right here, which we were looking for that bounce. And we got that bounce on a 60 and then we failed. Are, you know, and now this is where we are going into tomorrow. The possibility of a, a pivot area here playing out. I still think we have a little more downside, and then possibly a reversal. We'll play it. Uh, you know, we'll just play it minute by minute tomorrow. And I look forward to seeing you in the markets. Don't forget a big watch list coming out tomorrow. I haven't shown you these because it's going out to public. So I have all the good ones. I haven't shown those, um, but some really nice setups coming up. And I'll see you then tomorrow in the markets. All right, take care.